The Sixth Septenary of Aphorisms Aphorism 36 Care is to be taken that experiments be not mixed with experiments, but that every one be only simple and several, for God and nature have ordained all things to a certain and appointed end. So that for example's sake, they who perform cures with the most simple herbs and roots do cure the most happily of all. And in this manner, in constellations, words and characters, stones and such like, do lie hid the great influences of virtues indeed, which are in place of a miracle. So also are words, which being pronounced do forthwith cause creatures both visible and invisible to yield obedience, as well creatures of this own world, as of the watery, airy, subterranean, and Olympic, cosmic, and infernal, and also the divine. Therefore simplicity is chiefly to be studied, and the knowledge of such simple things is to be sought out from God. Otherwise, by no other means or experience they can be found out. Aphorism 37. And let all lots have their place decently. Order, reason, and means are the three things which do easily render all learning, as well of the visible as invisible creatures. This is the course of order, that some creatures are creatures of the light, others of darkness. These are subject to vanity, because they run headlong into darkness and enthrall themselves in eternal punishment for their rebellion. Their kingdom is partly very beautiful and transitory and corruptible things on the one part, because it cannot consist without some virtue and great gifts of God, and partly most filthy and horrid to be spoken of, because it abounds with all the wickedness and sin, idolatry, contempt of God, blasphemies against the true God in His work, worshippers of devils, disobedience toward magistrates, sedition, homicide, robberies, tyranny, adulteries, wicked lusts, rapes, thefts, lies, perjuries, pride, and a covetous desire of rule in this mixture consists the kingdom of dark. But the creatures of light are filled with eternal truth, and with the grace of God, and are lords of the whole world, and do reign over the lords of darkness, as the members of Christ. Between these and the other there is a continual war until God shall put an end to their strife by his last judgment. Aphorism 38. Therefore magic is twofold in its first division. The one is of God, which he bestows on the creatures of light. The other also is of God, but as it is a gift which he gives unto the creatures of darkness, and this is also twofold. The one is to a good end as when the princes of darkness are compelled to do good unto the creatures, God enforcing them, the other is for an evil end, when God permits such to punish evil persons, that magically they are deceived to destruction, or also he commands such to be cast out into the darkness. The second division of magic is that it brings to pass some works with visible instruments, through visible things, and it affects other works with invisible instruments by invisible things, and it causes other things as well with mixed means as instruments and effects. The third division is, there are some things which are brought to pass by invocation of God alone. This is partly prophetical and philosophical, and partly, as it were, theophrastic. Other things there are which are by reason of the ignorance of the true God are done with the princes of spirits, that his desires may be fulfilled, such is the work of the Mercurialists. The fourth division is that some exercise their magic with the good angels instead of God, as it were descending down from the Most High God. Such was the magic of Balaam. Another magic is that which exercises their action with the chief of the evil spirits. Such were they who wrought by the minor gods of the heathens. The fifth division is that some do act with spirits openly and face to face which is given to few. Others do work by dreams and other signs, which the ancients took from their auguries and sacrifices. The sixth division is that some work by immortal creatures, others by mortal creatures, as nymphs, satyrs, and such inhabitants of other elements, pygmies, etc. The seventh division is that the spirits do serve some of their own accord, without art, others they will scarce attend, being called by art. Among these species of magic, that is the most excellent of all, which depend upon God alone. The second, them whom the spirits do serve faithfully of their own accord. 
The third is that which is the property of Christians, which depend on the power of Christ, which he hath in heaven and earth. Aphorism 39. There is a sevenfold preparation to learn the magic art. The first is to meditate day and night how to attain to the true knowledge of God, both by his word revealed from the foundation of the world, as also by the seal of the creation, and of the creatures, and by the wonderful effects which the visible and invisible creatures of God do show forth. Secondly, it is requisite that a man descend down into himself, and chiefly study how to know himself, what mortal part he hath in him, and what immortal, and what part is proper to himself, and what diverse. Thirdly, that he learn, by the immortal part of himself, to worship, love, and fear the eternal God, and to adore him in spirit and truth, and with his mortal part to do those things which he knows to be acceptable to God and profitable to his neighbors. These are the first three and chiefest precepts of magic, wherewith let every one prepare himself that covets to obtain true magic or divine wisdom, that he may be accounted worthy thereof, and one to whom the angelical creatures willingly do service, not in an occult manner only, but also manifestly, as it were, face to face. Fourthly, whereas every man is to be vigilant to see what kind of life he shall be called from his mother's womb, that every one may know whether he be born to magic, and that what species thereof, which every one may be perceive easily that reads these things, and by experience may have success therein, for such things and such gifts are not given but only to the low and humble. In the fifth place we are to take care, that we understand when the spirits are assisting us in undertaking the greatest business, and he that understands this, it is manifest that he shall be made a magician of the ordination of God, that is, such a person who uses the ministry of the spirits to bring excellent things to pass. Here, as for the most part, they sin, either through negligence, ignorance, or contempt, or by too much superstition. They offend also by ingratitude towards God, whereby many famous men have afterward drawn upon themselves destruction. They sin also by rashness and obstinacy, and also when they do not use their gifts for that honor of God which is required, and do prefer to glorify themselves. Sixthly, the magician hath need of faith and taciturnity, especially that he disclose no secret which the Spirit hath forbid him, as he commanded Daniel to seal some things, that is, not to declare them in public. So it was not lawful for Paul to speak openly of all things which he saw in a vision. No man will believe how much is contained in this one precept. Seventh, in him that would be a magician, there is required the greatest justice, that he undertake nothing that is ungodly, wicked, or unjust, nor to let it once come into his mind, and so he shall be divinely defended from all evil. Aphorism 40. When the magician determines with himself to do any incorporeal thing, either with an exterior or interior sense, then let him govern himself according to these seven subsequent laws to accomplish his magical end. The first law is this, that he know that such a spirit is ordained unto him from God, and let him meditate that God is the beholder of all his thoughts and actions. Therefore let him direct all the course of his life according to the rule prescribed in the word of God. Secondly, always pray with David, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, and strengthen me with thy free spirit, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, do not give power to any lying spirit, as thou didst over Ahab, that he perished, but keep me in thy truth. Amen. Thirdly, let him accustom himself to try the spirits, as the Scripture admonishes, for grapes cannot be gathered of thorns. Let us try all things and hold fast that which is good and laudable, that we may avoid everything that is repugnant to the divine power. The fourth is, to be remote and clear from all manner of superstition. For this is superstition, to attribute divinity in this place to things, wherein there is nothing at all divine, or to choose or frame to ourselves, to worship God with some kind of worship which he hath not commanded, 
Such are the magical ceremonies of Satan, whereby he impudently offers himself to be worshipped as God. The fifth thing to be eschewed is all worship of idols, which bind any divine power to idols or any things of their own proper motion, where they are not placed by the Creator or by the order of nature, which things many false and wicked magicians feign. Sixthly, all the deceitful imitations and affections of the devil are also to be avoided, whereby he imitates the power of the creation and of the Creator, that he may so produce things with a word, that they may not be what they are, which belong only to the omnipotence of God and is not communicable to the creature. Seventh, let us cleave fast to the gifts of God and of his Holy Spirit, that we may know them and diligently embrace them with our whole heart and all of our strength. Aphorism 41. We come now to the last nine aphorisms of the whole tome, wherewithal we will, the divine mercy assisting us, conclude this whole magical isagogue. Therefore, in the first place, it is to be observed what we understand by magician in this work. Him, then, we count to be a magician, to whom, by the grace of God, the spiritual essences do serve to manifest the knowledge of the whole universe, and of the secrets of nature contained therein, whether they are visible or invisible. This description of a magician plainly appears and is universal. An evil magician is he, whom by the divine permission the evil spirits do serve, to his temporal and eternal destruction, and perdition to deceive men, and draw them away from God. Such was Simon Magus, of whom mention is made in the Acts of the Apostle, and in Clemens, whom St. Peter commanded to be thrown down upon the earth, when as he had commanded himself, as it were a God, to be raised up into the air by the unclean spirits. And to this order are also to be referred all those who are noted in the two tables of the law, and are set forth with their evil deeds. The subdivisions and species of both kind of magic we will note in the tome following. In this place it shall suffice that we distinguish the sciences, which is good and which is evil, whereas man sought to obtain them both at first to his own ruin and destruction, as Moses and Hermes do demonstrate. Aphorism 42. Secondly, we are to know that a magician is a person predestined to this work from his mother's womb. Neither let him assume any such great things to himself, unless he be called divinely by grace hereunto, for some good end. To a bad end is that the scripture might be fulfilled. It must be that offense will come, but woe be to that man through whom they come. Therefore, as we have before often time admonished, with fear and trembling we must live in this world. Notwithstanding, I will not deny, but some men may with study and diligence obtain some species of both kind of magics, if it may be admitted. But he shall never aspire to the highest kinds thereof, Yet if he covet to assail them, he shall doubtless offend both in soul and body. Such are they, who by the operations of false magicians, are sometimes carried to Mount Hork, or in some wilderness or desert, or they are maimed in some member, or are simply torn in pieces, or are deprived of their understanding, even as many such things happen by the use thereof, where men are forsaken by God and delivered to the power of Satan. So ends the 6th septenary.